Dreams or reality? The mind's labyrinth unveiled. Feel that your dreams could be a second life? Maybe they are. Maybe they're more. Explore the science and the spiritual as we delve into the vivid world of dreams, a realm where every fact meets fantasy, where the mundane meets the mystical. Is your mind a sanctuary or a prison? Let's unravel the enigma of dreams and their impact on our waking lives. Hey listeners, welcome back to I4L, Tips to Greatness, Navigating Life with Insightful Information. Tonight, we have a compelling episode for you. We'll delve deep into those confounding insights where dreams are too real and reality feels like a dream. Let's venture into the corners of the human mind and soul to explore what's really going on. Section 1, The Neurological Perspective. All right, my knowledge-thirsty listeners, let's start this exploration by cracking open the skull, metaphorically, of course. The brain, that marvelous organ sitting in our heads, is a curious playground where dreams are cooked up. So how exactly does it serve up a Michelin-starred five-course dream sequence that leaves you questioning reality itself? Neural Symphony When we enter the realm of rapid eye movement, or REM sleep, our brain isn't just idling. It's hard at work. Specific brain regions that process emotions, experiences, and memories kick into high gear. Picture it like a symphony of neurons, each section, be it the strings, woodwinds, or brass, playing their unique roles to create an orchestral masterpiece. Neurotransmitter Party During REM, neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine flood the synaptic gaps, making for a colorful, if not downright hallucinogenic, dream experience. Think of those neurotransmitters as the party guests. Serotonin is the introspective philosopher while dopamine is the ecstatic dancer. Together, they co-create the complex narratives and vivid visuals that become your dreams. Disinhibition and hyperconnectivity. In Hobson's 2018 research, the concept of disinhibition and hyperconnectivity play pivotal roles in dream creation. Usually, the brain has specific guardrails to regulate thought processes, but in the REM phase, these guardrails are lifted, allowing different neural pathways to connect freely, hence hyperconnectivity. Imagine a city with no traffic rules for a night. All the cars, or neurons, take routes that they normally wouldn't, leading to unexpected but fascinating interactions. The Role of the Amygdala Let's not forget the emotional powerhouse of the brain, the amygdala. During REM sleep, the amygdala is particularly active, this is the guy responsible for your dreams feeling like emotional roller coasters. Whether you're skydiving with an ex or battling aliens on a distant planet, your emotional reactions feel as real as they do in the waking state. Because, in essence, they are real. At least to your brain. Cognitive Chaos Theory To sum it up, dreaming can be likened to cognitive chaos theory. Seemingly random events creating intricate, ordered patterns. It's a messy, chaotic ballet of neurons that somehow produce vivid stories and impossibly real characters. These neural activities allow us to play out scenarios, confront our deepest fears, or, at times, even find inspiration for the next big thing. So there you have it, folks. The neurological stage where your dreams, whether they be nightmares or fantasies, come alive. Understanding this process isn't just academic, it's an invitation to comprehend ourselves better, one dream at a time. How's that for a deep dive into the cranium? Ready for more? Stick around. Section 2. The Trauma Perspective Buckle up, dream navigators, because we're venturing into the heart's dark alleyways now. I'm talking about the murky intersections of trauma and dreams. Here, the lines between dream and reality don't just blur. They entangle in a way that might send shivers down your spine. Dreams as the Mind's Theater Let's begin by appreciating dreams as a sort of theater of the mind. Normally, it's a venue for all kinds of performances, comedies, dramas, mysteries, you name it. However, when trauma enters the equation, the stage gets commandeered by a more sinister play, one with reruns night after night. The Searing Imprints of Trauma 
People suffering from PTSD or other trauma-related conditions don't just dream, they often relive. The trauma leaves a lasting imprint on the psyche, so vivid and affecting that it bypasses the usual dream filters. These are not mere flashbacks. They are full-blown, sensory-rich reenactments that sometimes feel more real than the waking world. The Vicious Cycle of Reprocessing As Agargon and Cartwright pointed out in their 2010 study, those with trauma-related conditions can find themselves in an unending cycle of mental reprocessing during REM sleep. The brain attempts to make sense of what happened by running through it repeatedly, almost as if it's stuck on a nightmarish merry-ground with no breaks. How Trauma Twists REM Functions The role of REM sleep changes drastically when trauma is involved. While REM is generally a phase of sleep where emotional regulation occurs, in the case of trauma, it can become a stage for emotional turmoil instead. This flip can actually perpetuate the trauma, making it even more challenging for sufferers to find emotional peace or resolution. The fight or flight quandary. Another startling aspect is the activation of the brain's fight or flight mechanisms during these trauma-induced dreams. This activation causes an adrenaline surge, amplifying the emotional intensity of the dream and by extension, the psychological stress upon awakening. The resilience factor. But let's not forget, our brains are surprisingly resilient. While some may see dreams as a cage for their traumas, others find a certain catharsis in confronting these nocturnal ghosts. Indeed, there's ongoing research into how dreaming can actually serve as a natural form of exposure therapy, allowing the individual to confront and process their traumas in a relatively safe environment. And there you have it, a trek through the emotional labyrinth where trauma and dreams intersect. As you can see, the realm of dreaming can either be a sanctuary or a prison cell, depending on the baggage we bring along for the ride. Ready to keep peeling back the layers of this multifaceted topic? I promise, the twists and turns only get more fascinating. Stay tuned. Section 3. The Astrology Perspective Ah, here comes the part where we flirt with the mystical. A cosmic dance, if you will. I hear the skeptics rolling their eyes already, but hold your horses. We're diving into astrology and, more specifically, the enigmatic realm of Aquarius, the water bearer of the Zodiac. Aquarius, the Celestial Dreamweaver We Aquarians are often a unique breed, often credited with a knack for introspection and an uncanny ability to peer into life's metaphysical dimensions. Whether you attribute it to the planetary alignment or just coincidence, there's something about being an Aquarius that seems to be intrinsically tied to the world of dreams. Not just any dreams, but vivid ones. It's not that Aquarians are the only ones having vivid dreams, but there's a theory, largely anecdotal mind you, that Aquarians are more prone to these intense, lifelike dream experiences. They're not just dreams, they're full-blown cinematic universes equipped with plots more intricate than a David Lynch film. Reality Dust. Is it a thing? Now, what's this about an extra sprinkle of reality dust? Well, astrology aficionados might argue that the celestial bodies are aligned in such a way that amplifies the realism and emotional intensity of your dreams. Neptune, the planet of dreams and intuition, is said to have a particular sway over Aquarians, perhaps fine-tuning the frequency of your dream dial. Balancing Science and Spirituality while it's easy to dismiss astrology as folklore or wishful thinking, we must remember that for centuries, it served as a framework for understanding human behavior and natural phenomena. Sure, it's not exactly peer-reviewed science in the way we modern folks like to validate things, but hey, it's a perspective that offers its own set of valuable insights. The Cosmic Mirror Dreams could be your mind's mirror reflecting the cosmic influence on your earthly experience. Or they could just be a mix of yesterday's leftover emotions and that spice of burrito you ate before bed. In the end, whether you're a devout astrology believer or a staunch realist, it's worth considering the interplay between celestial energies and your dream world. So if you're lying in bed pondering your surreal dreams, maybe, just maybe, you could blame it or thank it on the stars. As far-fetched as that may seem, in the realm of dreams, who's to say what's too outlandish to be true? 
That wraps up our cosmic foreplay into dreamscapes, but don't drift off just yet. There's more to come. Remember, when it comes to exploring dreams, the sky, quite literally, is the limit. Stay tuned. Section 4. The Spiritual Perspective A Gateway to the Mystical Now, let's switch gears and delve into the spiritual perspective. You see, from ancient wisdom traditions to modern metaphysical thought, dreams have been considered more than just mere figments of our imagination. For some, these nocturnal visions serve as gateways, not just to our subconscious, but to other realms entirely. Research in Spiritual Neuroscience Drawing from the work of Purcell, Moffat, and Hoffman in 2015, we find that the confluence of neuroscience, meditation, and philosophy points towards a broader understanding of consciousness itself. Their research explores the intersection between empirical science and spiritual experience, suggesting that our understanding of waking and dream states is far more nuanced than we might have previously believed. The dream world could indeed be a space where self and consciousness interact in ways that extend beyond material understanding. The Soul's Odyssey In certain spiritual paradigms, the dream state is not a lesser form of reality, but a different one, where the soul is said to traverse different dimensions, worlds, or layers of reality. This isn't escapism, it's soulful exploration. You may be walking the corridors of past lives, engaging with spiritual guides, or coming face to face with your deepest fears and greatest hopes. Wisdom and Insights Think of these journeys as a cosmic classroom. In this view, dreams aren't merely random neural fireworks, but purposeful experiences where your soul gains wisdom, insights, or even closure. The learning isn't just personal, it's transcendental. You're not just collecting life lessons. You're accumulating soul wisdom. The Thin Veil Some traditions go so far as to assert that the dream realm is as authentic as our waking world. Could it be possible that these dreams are not just figments of your brain's imagination, but real experiences happening on a different plane of existence? A veil separates these worlds, and during sleep, it seems like you're lifting that veil, if only slightly. The Philosophical Quandary it's a matter that calls to mind the philosophy of dualism and monism. Are mind and matter separate, or are they different aspects of the same fundamental reality? The spiritual perspective often leans towards the latter, suggesting that dream experiences, as varied and abstract as they may be, are part of a unified field of existence. A Multiverse Within So, as you float between two dream realms, Consider that you might not just be a prisoner of your own mind, but an explorer of your soul's multiverse. And who's to say that's any less real than what you experience with your five senses? That concludes our spiritual escapade through the landscape of dreams. Whether you find this perspective illuminating or far-fetched, it certainly offers another intriguing lens through which to view your twilight quandaries. In the grand scheme of things, your dreams might just be the universe, or universes, speaking to you in a language that transcends words. It's a dialogue between the seen and the unseen, the known and the unknown. And in that dialogue, you might just find the answers you've been seeking, or questions you never dared to ask. Closing Thoughts The Gossamer Threads As we come to the end of this auditory journey, let's pause and reflect. We find ourselves in a world that dances on the edge of the ethereal, where the border between dreams and reality is as delicate as a spider's silk, yet just as tenacious. These gossamer threads link us to realms that we still don't fully comprehend. Multidimensional beings. Whether it's the chaotic ballet of neurons explored through neuroscience, the haunting echoes of trauma, the cosmic influences of astrology, or the mystical dimensions explored by spirituality, we are, in essence, multidimensional beings. Our waking lives and dreamscapes are intricately woven together to create the complex tapestry that is human experience. Unity in Complexity No perspective is entirely standalone. Each offers a unique facet of the intricate jewel that is consciousness. The neurological networks, trauma residues, planetary alignments, or soul journeys, all of these things coalesce into a unified yet infinitely complex portrait of who we are. The mind as friend and foe. 
We began this episode contemplating the mind as both our most intriguing companion and our most treacherous foe. Our exploration has led us to realize that the mind is not merely a biological machine, but a gateway to various realities, some healing, some haunting, some utterly inexplicable. Solace in the web. So if you find yourself caught in a web, be it of dreams or emotions or of existential quandaries, remember, the threads that bind you also connect you to larger mysteries, to potential healing, and to untapped wisdom. You're not ensnared. You're intricately connected, a nexus in a much grander network. And that is something to both ponder and celebrate. You are not alone. Above all, whether you're navigating through the labyrinthian corridors of your dreams or walking the more tangible roads of waking life, remember, you are not alone. Others, too, are on their journeys, guided by their own set of celestial constellations, carrying their own traumas, experiencing their own unique neural fireworks, and seeking their own spiritual wisdom. Your story is but one note in a grand symphony, a symphony that we are all a part of. And on that resonant note, dear listeners, we bid you adieu until the next episode, where we'll unravel yet another thread in this intricate web called life. All right, that's a wrap for this episode, folks. Keep questioning, keep dreaming, and as always, keep seeking information for life. Until next time. <laughs>